It's only been a couple weeks since I did the last video, but now we're going to talk about three of the tournaments that have went on since then. We're going to talk about Major League Fishing Stage 2 Bass Pro Tour. We're going to talk about MPL's first tournament on Pickwick. And then last but not least, what just happened this weekend, the Bassmaster Classic. And we're going to go from the biggest to the least. No offense. The Bassmaster Classic was held up in Tennessee, and it was uh, great. I'm going to tell you some of my pros and cons on what I thought about the tournament. Uh, to start off, I thought Brandon Lester and Gussie, who ended up winning, and Brandon Card and some of the local Tennessee guys had a great opportunity to, to really do well. And most of the guys that I thought would do well did well. But this was a very odd tournament. Um, I think first, if you don't know how the Classic works, the Classic goes to different places and is the best of the best fishing tournament to go see to go see if you've never been to a classic it's worth making the run if it's somewhat close and attending it's just awesome it's an awesome event and there's like i said there's a lot of pros and there's a lot of cons so what bass does is bass goes to certain areas and tries to see who's interested in sponsoring or hosting the event it comes down to what the fishery is like is there enough space for an expo where they can do the the weigh-ins and how much that city is willing to upfront to bass to have it come in because the classic will probably bring in 35 40 million dollars of revenue to the community and that's really important i think that they i think that having it where they had in tennessee was great however i think the problem that happened this time is they had a huge fishing tournament the week before the classic and the fishing just really was off if you would have told me that gussie who who ended up winning would have only caught 12 fish and would win the classic i would tell you that was never going to happen it's just it, it shows the quality of fish that he was on but it also shows you how bad the fishing is i didn't think that they should allow a tournament to be held a week before the classic bass is bass couldn't tennessee or the dnr or whoever it is get a hold of the that tournament and say hey, look just postpone it for a week later fishing wasn't very good it wasn't very exciting the first two days gussie just did well he just killed it he just pulled out to a great lead and the average fish was just small bass can't say any more big fish big big stage because that classic was small fish probably some of the smallest fish I've seen in a long, long time. Maybe the smallest average catch per angler. I mean, on the first day, 31 out of 55 anglers didn't catch scorable bass. And it was because there was so much pressure on all those ponds, lakes, whatever you want to call them. There were a lot of times where the fish were either small or they were just catching the smallies. I know Gussie caught a mean mouth, which was a big fish on day one. But overall, the fish catching wasn't very good. Didn't add to any drama for the first two days. And with the day three, and everyone just catching small fish after small fish, there could have been a lot more drama, but Gussie just needed two fish to win it. And again, to catch 12 and to win the tournament is really surprising. Now, some of my pros and cons I'm gonna go through. To start off, I thought a big, massive pro was the new Hummingbird Mega View that you could watch as the angler was fishing. I thought this was phenomenal. It was nice to see what they were seeing, how they were seeing it, and then hear the commentators say, oh, there's three fish here, there's three fish there. I thought the Mega View from Hummingbird was dead on. It was one of the first things, or one of the few things that they did different this year. Bass is really good at staying very consistent. They don't add or change things because why change things if they're not broken? The Mega View Live was probably my biggest up, biggest, biggest pro that I saw this year. My biggest downfall or negative thing was Steve Bowman. While I thought it was great to have two anglers with them, with him talking, I felt like Steve Bowman was the guy from Weekend at Bernie's. He was just a dead guy sitting in a chair that 
Like I said, I know he's a Hall of Famer, but I don't know if he knows anything about fishing anymore. I don't know if fishing has passed him. He just was uninteresting, no enthusiasm, and it just was horribly boring to watch him talk. I wish they would have just pushed his chair and his dead body off to the side and then just let the anglers talk and do their thing. I thought he interrupted people. I thought that there was too many times where the microphones were doing weird things. Uh, it, I felt like a lot of times either the microphones were too weren't loud enough or you just couldn't hear it when the 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 tournament coverage was going on fs1 and you're watching it online you're just not getting any commentary there was literally no sound a majority of the time or very little sound and you had to turn your speakers on as loud as possible and then you would instantly get after three minutes seven or eight of the same commercials time after time after time. There were more commercials than fishing going on on day three. The commercials were horrible. They were the same thing over and over and over. They don't need to show me another Ray Scott tra uh, trailer because I've seen it 65 times and I just didn't, I didn't like it. Uh, I thought that I had to get on my, my television over there and watch FS1 and because Bowman and the commercials just were too much. And when I did watch it on FS1 or Fox, it was still way too many commercials. It was way too much. And I did not like that at all. Again, I love the mega view, but the truth be told, we're, we need to do a whole video on forward facing sonar. It's here and it's staying. Anglers who are really good at their forward facing sonar are the ones that are doing really well in all of the tournaments. I thought at one point in time, if you were really shallow or you're bed fishing or stuff like that, that you might not use that so much or if it was really clear water. What we found out is if you're not really good at forward facing sonar, you're not in the game. And that's a really, I think there's some pros and some cons to that. And like I said, we should probably do a video about that at some point, but forward facing sonar had a huge play in the classic. And I couldn't be happier for Gussie to win. I mean, Gussie was one of the, should have been one of the favorites, just outfished, outclassed, outdid everybody so it's really great to see him win he's going to be a great classic ambassador and i'm very happy that he did so well so now let's talk about stage two of major league fishing in the bass pro tour we have got to do something about where we pick and where we go uh mlf you did it again the qualifying rounds were just dink after dink after dink, and it was not interesting to watch. I know the place was really cold. You were hoping that there was gonna be better weather, but it was really crazy to say the biggest thing or the most, the thing that was said most during coverage and anything is, let's hope this is scorable because there were way too many fish that were just super small. I thought it was funny that one guy would say, oh, I got a big one." Strader said, I'm gonna, I got a big and I got a big one. And then he pulls it out and it's one, one pound, 11 ounce. The score old bass was one pound. Uh, they, they, they mentioned several times, they're using bigger baits to looking for bigger fish. And then they catch a two pound fish. There was just so many things that were just, just didn't make it a lot of fun. The championship round on, it happened on media day for the classic, which I don't understand. I don't think there should be any tournaments the week of, of the classic or the week of the red crest. Let the anglers go do their sponsorships at the expos and stuff like that. But in the knockout round, 17 out of 40 anglers did not catch five scoreable bass. Come on, man, that's just terrible. So good, you have to watch it again. Hawk, you're a real football guy. You can play for me any day, but come on, man. We've They've picked two spots in a row that are just uninterested and boring to watch fishing. We have to say some positives. Michael Neal, if you don't know who Michael Neal is, he is on fire. He is catching and doing everything right. He has got this new sense of urgency and sense of um, hunger where he wants to do well and he is fishing out of his mind. I think he's going to give Jacob a good run for Angler of the Year on the BPT. Having said that, it doesn't matter if you want to do five fish or if you want to do any fish. Jacob Wheeler is the real deal. The man just catches fish. He just does everything right. If there was a chance for him to fish BPT and fish the elites, 
I would say he would be he would win more money than anyone has ever won in fishing in one year. He is that good everywhere he goes. He's consistent. He is hands down the best angler on the planet. But again, they're catching a lot of dinks and they've got to do something about where they're going fishing. I, I said it in the last video, go to Florida, go to Texas, go to Georgia, uh, go to California, go someplace where you're catching big fish because these dink fests are not fun to watch. And I felt like the classic was a dink fest and I felt this is the second stage of the Bass Pro Tour that's an even bigger dink fest. And last but not least, and probably the only time I'm gonna cover MPFL for the rest of the year, uh, MPFL had their first uh, tournament on Lake P on Pickwick. Brandon Perkis went wire to wire. Congratulations to him, he won $100,000. He destroyed everyone. It wasn't even a contest. He's a local boy, local pond, that's his place. He absolutely put it down. NPFL has an issue. No one knows the tournaments are going on. No one knows the tournaments are going on. They're charging $6 to listen to Fat Cat and Luke do the, the weigh-in afterwards, which I find, I don't know who's paying $6 for that. Um, I thought that they, you just don't know anything about them. And, and to be honest, a lot of Google and the internet doesn't know anything about them. I'll pop it up. But the last news feed was January 6, 2023, and it wasn't even on their own website. You can't go in the end of March and have nothing on Google. Google's robots constantly are looking for information. And you put in National Professional Fishing League and just nothing comes up. Nothing about who wins. Nothing. And it's the reason why they don't do well. Uh, I don't know who watched the, the, the feed on that new app that they have because nobody was watching it last year on Facebook or YouTube. And they need to do a better job at getting the information out to people. It's great that they have $100,000, but it's sad that only 76 people are out there fishing. It's sad. You can win the same amount on Bass Pro Tour and the Elites, and they can't fill a full field. Now, I think next year, I would hope next year they'll get more people, but honestly, they've had three years where they just keep going down and down and down. And I don't have a clue where their next stop is. I guess I could look it up and do it, but I'm not going to. I, I'd love to know if you are watching NPFL, if you paid the $6 to take it to Luke and Fat Cat weigh-in thing. Is anyone doing it? Because I think the only people that are watching NPFL right now are people that are anglers, wives, and family. Because I don't know anyone that's that's watching it, covering it, doing anything. Um, and it's sad because they have a lot of money. They're giving away a lot of money. 20 anglers at least get paid. They have three great anglers on there. Really, more than three, I should say that. But they have Patrick Walters, John Cox from Florida, Quentin Capo. They're, those three guys are, are tournament-proven anglers. They're going to cash a check probably every every time they go fishing. So that's three of the 20 out of the out of the bag for those other anglers. But we'll see. Hopefully I'm wrong, fingers crossed, but I'd love to hear what you think. Okay, there it is. Hopefully you like this. I was going to do this live, but I think this can I can make this I can do this video here at the house real quick, edit it down and then put it on on the uh, YouTube for y'all to watch. But I'm going to do some live stuff soon. Okay? I really do appreciate everyone watching this and putting your comments below on what you think about all these topics. Which one did you watch? Which one did, am I right or wrong about the classic or BPT or MPFL? Did you watch it? Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. That was an odd way to end, but I'm going to end it there. See y'all soon. Cheers.